and time, James. We were on a, a, a wave that was carrying us quite fast about two years ago and then the OP got delayed for two years. So we lost all that momentum. We lost all that buzz that was going on. So now it could become difficult. We don't know, because it's almost like we're making a comeback. You know, it's, it's quite a strange situation mm. to be in. One more, tell me, tell me one more. We thought our music was brilliant, and uh, we wanted it to be put on a major label so it could be distributed all around the world instead of really in England, which is about as much as independ most independents can manage or could manage at that time. And we, we thought majors would be able to do that for us. Um, we thought the music would sell itself because it was so good and so original. We were very naive in those days. Still. Um, so we moved to a major record company. So They couldn't pigeon, like the Manchester sound is meant to be rather dark yeah. and brooding and depressed yeah. and Joy Division suicide, that kind of area. And we wouldn't be put in that category, so people gave up pigeonholing us in that one. But it's quite an, it's, it's it, you more know, like, why aren't you? Yeah, it's more like, you know, why, why aren't, aren't you in that area? I mean, we reacted against that consciously. We wouldn't wear dull clothes and look down all the time. We actually, you know, we thought that you could actually make strong statements and present strong ideas without having to look depressed and serious all the time, that you could do it with a sense of humour and enjoy it. Hey, hey, hey. I tend to write the lyrics late at night, say after midnight, till about four, because I find that's the time when my conscious brain isn't there all the time, I'm kind of knackered. So strange things come into my head at that time. And I'll just allow those, those stories to take place. So you, you get all kinds of strange stories. Um, for example, um, an early one about an insect crawling to somebody's ear and eating their brain. And the person actually finding that it made them feel better because it ate the parts of their brain that uh, prevented them from enjoying life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it became a kind of uh, benign insect neowig. Uh, the songs like that, which um, th they were very old songs, and the newer songs are slightly more conventional than that. Well, some of them are. Tim, you've just finished the new album, Strip Mine. How did it go? Fine. It went very well. It took about two months. Hard labour. The engineer producer we were working with worked 20 hour days, four hours sleep, so we had difficulty keeping up with him. But it, it went well in recording. The mixing was difficult because, again, it was 20 hour days, and uh, after about four days, we were exhausted. Um, we weren't happy with the mixes, right. so we had to fight for remixes, and that's why the LP took two years in being released. <laughs> What for single? Um, in Manchester, in Piccadilly Square, which is a big, busy, grey, smelly, smoky city square, in the evenings, sort of five o'clock, just before it gets dark, when the wind is going fast, all these birds gather, these starlings, and they all take off in these huge clusters, and they start flying, and they all fly together, and they all suddenly turn left together, and then right together. And it, it's an incredible sight. It's like sort of hieroglyphics in the air. And you just watch these huge swarms of birds doing this. And it was just, what for is about me, basically, I suppose, feeling quite depressed and down and walking through the smelly city, thinking of all the kind of news headlines that you read and being depressed. And then looking up and seeing this incredible sight. And just sort of, you know, I used to stand there for about an hour watching these birds. And people you do that, and actually you, know, you see them just standing there watching them with their mouths open. And it's like a beautiful natural sight in the middle of the city. 
and it's about being uplifted by something like that. That's what the song's about. Tell me about the new single. It's got a curious title to start with. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I, the way I write lyrics in, in rehearsals is I often come up with sounds first. Um, so there was a song I used to sing, Ridley Ya, Ridley Ya, and that became really hard. So often I convert the sounds into words, into meanings. Um, but with Yaho, it was a good, like a scream. Yaho, you know, like quite a scream of despair. And that's why it's called Yaho. It's a story about um, a tribe of people who live on a beach and they have a big kind of taboo about going in the water, going in the sea. The sea's a big kind of mysterious unknown to them. And one day somebody gets up, walks down the beach and swims into the sea. And everybody at first kind of goes, yeah, yeah, and cheering him on. And then they're all really frightened and they all start kind of going, ah, you know, pray for a whirlpool or something, you know, I hope he drowns. And then he just swims away. And it's like they're all left there and no one else has the courage to follow them. And they think the danger lies in taking the risk, but the actual fact is they're on a beach that's quicksand and they're the ones who are sinking. And it's just about, it's a song about taking risks and being frightened of failure. Well, I think we managed to follow that just.